Okay, so this tutorial is a follow-on of the previous tutorial, which was Xamarin iOS 2.1, creating a table view. And if you haven't gone through that, then please go through it now and come back to this tutorial, because this tutorial carries on directly from where the last one left off. So if we go back here, and we go back to our table source, now we want to do something every time we click one of those cells in the table. We need to again override something inside this class. So I'm just going to slot it in here and say public override row selected and it will populate something for me. Okay, so this just fires every time we touch a cell inside our app. So if you delete that throw new exception, what we'll do is we'll just open up a simple box that gives the user a message. We'll say new UI alert view. And we're going to give this a title, which will be alert, and then give it a message. You touched semicolon that, and then I'm going to say plus. And now we're going to say exactly what cell we touched and what was written inside the cell. And the way we do that is by again going to our table items, getting the index path dot row, so which row we've actually tapped and displaying that. And then comma, no, because we don't need anything for that. And then write your text for the button, OK, and no. And then don't forget to add your method, which is showing the actual box. I can't tell you the number of times I've forgotten this. And I've been so frustrated as to why my app isn't working and it's not showing my boxes. And it's because I simply left out dot show. It's what happens when you take shortcuts, kids. Don't do it. Right, so I'm going to save that, and I'm going to run it in the simulator. Okay, so we have our table. We can scroll through it like before. But now when I click, I have an alert, and it says, you touched red. And that is what I touched. What happens if I touch green? Oh, I touched green. Cool but you'll notice it stays touched and that's not something you expect on a mobile platform. So let's fix that right now. Click stop, go here under row selected and we're going to say table view dot deselect row. And then you have to tell it which row, index path, comma, true. Will it be animated? Yes, it will. And then close that off and save it and run it in your simulator. And all that does is say, once you've touched a row and you've finished whatever you're doing, then simply get rid of the highlight. So now when I click it, it says you touched red, but you'll look in the background, the highlight is gone. Green, highlight gone. Okay. Let's do something to change that. Because if we look down here in our table source, where am I looking at? Here we go. Where we've defined our cell. If you recall here in UI table view cell style, there are a few options. So if you delete default and the dot and you put the dot in again, you now have these options, default, subtitle, value one and value two. Let's try subtitle. So once you've chosen that, you can now put a little bit of detail text into your cell. So we can say cell dot detail text label dot text equal to, and we'll just set this to a string that we have. Or no, in fact, let's be clever. Let's say table items 
index path dot row. So it's simply saying which one am I going to take from my table of items. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back by one. And then I'm going to close that off. So let's run that and see what happens. Ah, we have a problem. It says array index is out of range. Now what that means is, if I just stop this, is that it's going into my array of table items. It says, okay, I've set the text of this one. Now I'm going to set the detailed text and I'm going to look for the table item, that's the current row, minus one. But if I start at row zero, which is how indexes are defined, and I try to go back one, it's now trying to access a row of minus one. And that simply won't work because you can't get an index of minus one in this case. So I'm gonna show you a few ways around that. None of them are probably optimal, but it'll give you an idea of some of the things you have to do inside programming to get around these problems. Now, the first thing you can do is a try catch statement. And a lot of people rely on these, but I wouldn't rely on them too much. And in this case, it's probably a wrong idea, but it's just to introduce it to you. So we're gonna say try the following. And we're gonna close it. And then you always follow try with catch. And generally, an exception, ex, close that. And all this does is say, I want you to try this. If it goes horribly wrong, take the error message and put it in here, but don't destroy my program. Don't quit everything like it just did. Okay, so now I'm gonna click play and let's see what happens. So it's loading up the app. Aha! So now if you look at the very first cell, which has an index of zero, it's tried to access an index of minus one in the background. Let me just move this via this line. And it hasn't worked. So it said, uh, oh, error, big error. And it goes to exception. And then it's dealt with. That's it finished. And then for the red cell, it'll come along here. It'll try this and it will work because the red cell is at index one. And one minus one equals zero. So the red cell detailed text now shows the one at blue. So everything works. And of course, if we click, the alerts still work too. Okay, so I'm just gonna come here. I'm gonna stop that. Now, delete this catch and try statement, and let's try something a little more elegant and probably correct. So we know this error is gonna happen. So we might want to test and say, which index path row are we on? And if we're on row zero, do not try this. So we can say, if index path dot row is greater than zero, then on the next line, try cell dot ttext label dot dot dot. Now, if you notice, I've actually removed the try catch statement. So if something goes wrong, the whole thing will come crashing down. Let's see. Click play. We're loading it up. We're praying. And it works. And that's because it's gone through this array and said, uh-oh, there's a row which equals zero. And zero is not greater than zero. So I'm not going to do this next line. All I'm gonna do is just return the cell and everything works. And that's probably a more elegant way of handling things. So let's stop that simulator. And, ooh, I don't know what we should do now. I think we should end the lesson there. That's quite a good lesson. So just to recap, in our view controller, we've created a string of data, whatever, and that can be anything. It doesn't have to be string here, it can be for example, list of string arrays. 
and that's just gone red because I need to resolve it. And I can say new list of string arrays. And then of course this stuff becomes invalid, but it doesn't matter. The point is you can put absolutely anything into a table view. So once you've got your data, you create your table, you initialize it, you put it somewhere using this frame, and then you say the source is this new table source class, which we created here, which inherits from UI table view source. And then within there, we're gonna have different sections for handling our incoming items, for telling it how many rows to create, for telling it what to do when someone touches a row, and what to do uh, as concerns creating new cells. Should I create a new one or should I reuse them? And if you look down here, what should I put inside those cells as text? And there are many, many other properties such as background colors and gradients and lots of special things where you can swipe to the side to delete a cell that we will cover much, much later in this course. So table view source creates your table, gets your cells, returns them to here, and they're added to your subview of a table. I hope you've understood all of that. If you haven't, then feel free to post questions on this channel with very specific questions. I can answer them on YouTube. If they're too general, then I probably can't answer them. Uh, if you'd like to send me some code that seems incorrect, then I'm happy to look at that too, as long as it makes enough sense for me to understand what's going on and you can outline the problem. So that concludes this lesson of Xamarin iOS.